God, we're going to have six topics we're going to put out, and I want to quickly run through all six of those topics. We're going to take the top two like we did this past term, and that was probably the most successful term we've ever done with, uh, with doing small groups uh, was this past term. People have really enjoyed the two topics we put out, so without further ado, I want to kind of get into what our six topics are. You'll notice if you got one of the handouts when you came in, two of them are exactly the same two topics we're doing now. Right now, what we've done this fall is done the book called The Daniel Dilemma by Pastor Chris Hodges, and then we're doing a book called God is Good by Bill Johnson. And so we're going to actually keep those in the mix. You could vote for those again because they were both so popular and so in demand that a lot of the people that did the Daniel Dilemma are like, well, we'd like to do a small group and study God is Good. And a lot of people that study God is Good want to do the Daniel Dilemma. Uh, quickly, what those are about, the Daniel Dilemma is Daniel lived in a really dark culture. As bad as we think uh, some things are in our nation right now, it's nothing compared to the culture that Daniel lived in with Nebuchadnezzar running things and everything else. And so the premise of the book is how do you stand for truth, but then also be a person of influence while standing for truth? Because it's easy to get up and, and stand for truth and offend everybody. That's not really all that challenging. You know, believe in Jesus or go to hell. See? That's easy. But that's not necessarily real effective. It's true, but there's, there's got to be a better way of doing it, right? Communicate it to where you actually lead people to the Lord, not just be true and ineffective. And so that whole book kind of explores that theme. And then God is good. Um, Bill Johnson wrote this four years ago, and here's like the opening line. In a world of fear, disease, crisis, torment, uncertainty, and hopelessness, sounds like this year, <laughs> what you believe about God's goodness reveals how you will respond to the trials and circumstances of everyday life. Your view of God impacts everything. And so that book is basically about exploring God's goodness and exploring how do we receive God's goodness and how do we live by faith, knowing God's always good. Even though he didn't cause the problems, how do we navigate those problems and challenges and live by faith? So that's a Daniel Dilemma. That is God is good. The next one we're going to put up is the Power Academy by Ashley and Carly Terradez. We get to have them here every year. They were just here in November. How many of you here when uh, the services they ministered? Was it good? So they're really good friends. So um, the Power Academy is basically their Bible school they're putting everybody through right now. Or they're doing an online Bible school. They started doing that in March when the pandemic hit. And so they've got different small groups that they do. The whole thing, you can do it online. They've got the video segments you can uh, download. The specific one we're going to do has a lot to do with identity and then specifically about how to hear God's voice, how to obey God's voice, how to recognize God's voice, that sort of thing. It has a lot to do that and how to live by faith. And so um, that's going to be that particular group. It's kind of like if you want to like get personally mentored by the Ashley or Carly Terradez, this is your opportunity to do it. They'll actually build us our own uh, private Facebook group, closed group, and I'm good friends with Ashley, so if we have questions or something, I can call Ashley and he, he, can, he can mentor us all. Amen. So that would be the next group. It's an awesome group, by the way, too, because we want to learn how to hear God's voice. That's a big deal in this season. So the next one is a book called Keep Your Love On by Pastor Danny Silk. And the reason we kind of want to put this one up for consideration is because it's a book about relationships. And relationships are the key to so many things that we do in life. How many of you have ever had God answer a prayer and the way he answered the prayer was through a relationship? A lot of my hands going up, heads nodding. So relationships are key, but a lot of people don't know how to do relationships very well. And a lot of people, what they do is they do relationships through fear, guilt, manipulation, control. And so this book take, teaches us how to receive the grace of God for ourselves, but then how to do relationships with grace and love with difficult people. How many of you have a difficult person in your life? How many of you sleep next to your difficult person every night? Sorry, Ashley, put your hand down. <laughs> Yeah, and so we don't want to do things through, through that. And so it's a big thing. And then we've been teaching on revival in our church, and I'm going to kick that off again in January, teaching on revival. How many of you know that most revivals that start, it's through people coming into unity together and through relationships? And one of the things that kills revival is relationships breaking apart. It's amazing when you study it out. God's moving. Thousands of people getting saved, and then people get mad at each other and start fighting. 
over stupid stuff. So anyway, it's a big deal. So that's why we put that one up here. Another one, uh, apparently Chris Hodges was so popular with the Daniel Dilemma, we put up another one of his books, and he is an awesome, awesome teacher. It's called uh, Fresh Air. And so this book is basically, I'll just read the kind of first line, but it's awesome, awesome teaching. It says, we've all gone through lives and uh, times in our lives when we feel like we need a fresh breeze to breathe new life into us. But what is that energy-giving, life-breathing force that inspires and empowers us? How do we put the wind in our sails again so we get unstuck, reset our compass, and redirect our course? Many of us, we felt stuck at some point in our life. We felt like we've hit a roadblock. We don't know how to get to the next level. And this is a book about the Holy Spirit and how to have a relationship with the breath of God, which is the Holy Spirit. And Chris, is he's such a great teacher. He takes some of the real, you know, teaching on the Holy Spirit sometimes can get kind of weird and spooky, and he kind of demystifies a lot of this stuff. He's real practical. And so he'll, he'll teach you about his best friend, the Holy Spirit, and how we can learn to hear the uh, voice of God and uh, have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. The last group that we're going to put up is by this amazing uh, teacher that I heard about. <laughs> Sorry, that was shameless self-promotion. Um, so I'm going to... It's me, um, for those who didn't get the joke. Um, we're going to actually put out my study notes on, I'm going to do a series at, toward the end of January. I'm going to start kicking off uh, on Awakening. And we're going to look at the first and second great awakenings, probably a little bit about wells and some other things that have happened in the last couple of hundred years, 250 years or so. And the reason we're going to do this is there's a lot of stuff going on in our nation right now. Like <clears throat> one of our states is talking about seceding. That happened in Britain. Um, there, were, there was talk of revolution in Britain. And they credit one of the things that stopped the revolution from happening in Britain that didn't cause it to break apart the way France did was a revival. And so we're going to explore what was going on then. It was a time of enlightenment and reasoning. And so people got away from faith. You see a lot of that still today. And so we're going to look at some practical things within this. And I'm going to, um, how to do it, but I'm going to put out my notes where you guys can actually talk about it and get it into you during the week. And the reason I want to do this, if many of you uh, remember back in October, I, I brought a message on prayer, and I started to think we're maybe going to shift into a revival, and I thought like the Holy Spirit checked me and said, don't do that. People aren't ready. And here's why. I've been studying on this stuff for about three years. The Holy Spirit downloaded a lot of stuff into me about what is possible in our community and in our nation. That, I mean, I was full of the word and faith in 2017, but I had never really studied revival personally. It was actually a cuss word to me because I thought revival is some mean preacher gets up here and beats the hell out of you with the Bible. That was my impression of revival, all right? I didn't know it could actually change and transform entire nations, had no clue. And so a lot of people have never really studied it in detail the way I have over the last three years. And so I want to take people where I am and bring people to where I am because I'm believing for a revival in this nation. But there's some things that are required in terms of prayer, in terms of sacrifice, in terms of you know, fasting, some other things. And, and unity, walking in unity with difficult people. It's real easy to walk in unity with people that get along but with difficult people. And so that's why we're putting that out. And so, but I want that to be, I'm, I'm not going to mandate it. I could just mandate it, but I want, I want to see if people are interested in doing that because I'm believing for a revival to hit Amen. our community. Amen. So that's the, that's the six. So uh, you can vote, put one by your favorite, by two by your second favorite, and so on. And we'll tabulate all the votes over the next couple of weeks, and then we'll let you know what we're going to decide. And then we'll kick these groups off toward the end of January, all right? Clear as mud? 